Welcome to this edition of Mox News. I'm Christina Jennings. And I'm Emma Culp. Let's get to your news. Downtown Chattanooga residents are on edge after a local halfway house makes plans to house more residents. The ML King Neighborhood Association made residents aware that the transition house is requesting a special permit to house residents who have committed violent crimes. The transition house serves as a facility that provides treatment for people not protected under the Fair Housing Act. This act represents criminals who present a direct threat to other people or property, including violent offenders, sex offenders, juvenile offenders, and convicted drug distributors. The halfway house is located on the corner of MLK and Central Avenue and is requesting a special permit to house 50 people, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A notice was sent out by the MLK Neighborhood Association in mid-September, and the news of the possible incoming residents was not taken positively by the community. I found out about the halfway house because a notice was put on our front door, and it just kind of explained that um, it would be down the street, and they were just giving us like some information about what it would be and that it would be in our neighborhood. On top of the large amount of families that populate MLK Boulevard, UTC houses over 3,000 students nine months out of the year. If the permit is granted, students and families would be living less than a mile away from violent criminals. Just knowing that there's going to be felons and living in that house very near me. Um, there's homeless people already in my apartment and sometimes I do feel unsafe walking around um, just near them even though they could be harmless, but just knowing that there are harmful people out there around me and I didn't get a notice about it. I just heard about it through a friend and um, just kind of worries me a little bit. The MLK Boulevard Neighborhood Association has created a petition that residents can sign in order to prevent the permit from being granted and keeping the community safe. In addition to the petition, the group will be attending the Board of Zoning Appeals meeting in hopes of reversing the decision. For more information on how this will affect you, visit the MLK Association's Facebook page and stay up to date on zoning meetings. This semester brought changes to a campus Greek tradition. We have team coverage on the alterations to lip sync and what the Greeks think about the new rules. Thanks guys, happy homecoming week to all of UTC. This year's lip sync made a big name for itself as it made new changes to help open up lip sync to more organizations across campus. So the main reason why we chose to eliminate prop boards was other organizations don't necessarily have the amount of time or the amount of people that the organizations in years past who have participated have, so they don't have the ability necessarily to plan that out in advance. And we did think about leaving them in, however, if you leave them in, people will be scared to go up after the group before them because it'll look kind of different. And so it wouldn't look like they were competing on the same level even if they were in the same category. Um, my initial reaction, it was kind of like, what? And then after that, I kind of just rolled with the punches, so. In addition to the prop changes, you can also no longer have skits or speaking parts in the dances. But this year's winners for the fraternities category was in third place, Kappa Alpha Order, second place, BYX, first place, Lambda Chi, and for the sororities, right third place was Sigma Chi, second place, Lambda Chi, and first place, Kappa Alpha Order. Congratulations. We right do not think these changes should stay because I think it just takes a lot of creativity out and less you can do with the, the top of the That's it for your 2018 Homecoming Lip Sync Wrap Up. Congrats to all the winners and all their hard work with working with the new changes. I'm Julie Poole with Mox News. Lip Sync consisted of many creative performances, but one organization really stole the show. Lambda Chi Alpha, a well-known fraternity on campus, took home first place with their performance of Scooby-Doo. The humorous and upbeat rhythm of the show captivated the audience and the judges. 
Garrett Dye, who played Daphne Blake in the show, was a crowd favorite. My favorite part about doing lip sync this year was just getting close with all the guys that did it and seeing how hard they'd work to come together to make it good. This victory was Lambda Kai's first in several years. Uh, when we won, I, you know, very excited, got really, really hyped with everybody, and I think I shed a single tear. Instead of each performance consisting of skits and dancing segments, this year only dancing was permitted. The question on should these rules remain in place is up in the air. Uh, I don't necessarily think they should. I think it takes a little, takes away a lot of the creativity that different organizations can put into it. Brady Lampton, who played Shaggy in the show, had mixed feelings about the new rules as well. I like that they uh, they switched it up on us. You know, it kept us on our toes a little bit. You know, you can't get too comfortable. But uh, I kind of miss having the script because uh, then you could put even more personality on the dance floor. Despite whether or not these rules are permanent, Lambda Chi Alpha already has the next lip sync in mind. We plan to win next year. Congrats to the hardworking men of Lambda Chi on such an impressive performance. I'm Emma Dietrich with Mox News. We are now joined by our own Jolie Poole and Emma Dietrich. They are both sorority members here at UTC, and we are really curious to see what they have to say. So this year's leak, sh leak show, Lip Sync, was a little different. They made some new changes that kind of surprised us. They took out the prop boards, which are the big boards in the back that the sorority members or Greek Life members painted in order to make the scene or the background of the show. They took that out so they could make it more approachable by other outside, um, outside groups that they could come in and wouldn't have to have those finances to buy these big, huge, like eight by 10 boards and create the scene. That way they could do it too and didn't feel left out if they didn't have those. Okay, so overall, do you think the change was for the better, or how do you think it impacted the show? I think it was a good change to make other people want to join it, but then again, no other groups participated besides Greek, uh, besides Greek affiliations. Mm -hmm. But then I feel like it also took out some of the creativity that was allowed to be shown in your dances. Okay, so what do you think? Do you think it made it more creative, or do you agree with Jolie? Um, I think it did take away a lot of creativity. Um, in addition to the prop boards, they also took out skits, which was a huge change because we were used to having the skits in between the dancing segments. And that was a huge challenge for my sorority um, because it kind of takes away the storyline and you had to kind of have your own theme along with the homecoming theme, along with school spirit, and it just kind of made things more difficult. Well, I hope you guys had fun overall. Was it stressful or what was the overall? You say it was stressful. It's and always stressful. It's always stressful. I mean, everything at that playing such a big event is always stressful. And you have working with 30 girls is not easy. Of course. Every single <laughs> night till midnight at times. And you're going to have screaming matches and you're going to get done. But at the end of the day, the whole event is very fun. It's all about UTC and school spirit. It gears up homecoming, gets you ready for the game. And all in all, it's fun. And But I mean, it is a stressful time. Okay, well, hopefully UTC will make some more changes to make it overall fun and less stressful. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. For a third year, we did not have step show on campus. Instead, historically black Greeks held their own step show off campus. We'll have a full report. And see the celebration for Day of the Dead. Those stories next. We take a look at the impact of the third annual Black Greek Step Show. We take a dive into the history that caused NPHC to host a separate show and track down where the proceeds will land. This year's Step Show was filled with fun, Greeks, and even some cool treats. Panhellenic Council at UTC created a vision three years ago between the UTC official step show and one that was specifically for black Greek members. This year was a third annual show hosted at Brainerd High School where a thousand dollars was donated to the school. Each of the participating sororities and fraternities had their performances broken down into movie themes. Some of the movies imitated were Leprechauns from the Hood, Freddy, and even Home Alone. Since there were both fraternities and sororities competing in the Black Greek Step Show, there were renters announced from each. When the Step Show was hosted on campus, it was expressed that a non-NPHC group made imitations. Multiple things that's happened throughout the years versus a, a white fraternity, a Panhellenic, I'm sorry, a Panhellenic fraternity wearing a cotton, like, slave-type shirt for homecoming um, that had a lot of uproar. And it was multiple organizations, like, throwing p black NPHC like sorority and fraternity signs and that became an uproar as well. 
Each year, since we have had the Black Greek Step Show, a former UTC alumni, Kenawa Kadabi, has been the host. He has been his undergrad before the separation and has seen the impact overall from the two groups. Um, it wasn't really as relevant to me until after I actually participated and after I became Greek. And then I realized that, oh, they uh, watch our steps and do the same thing. And the show was full of energy, and for the second year in a row, the Theta Row chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated won first place for the sorority. At UCC, the Eta Phi Beta chapter of Omega Sci Phi had just returned after a few weeks, but they hopped their way into first place as well. This event raised money for a great school and had fun in the process. I'm Christina Jennings with Max News. Halloween may be the mark of the end of November, but it's also the beginning of a much bigger celebration. Troy Nelson has more. <laughs> Students gathered at UTC's Multicultural Center to celebrate the Day of the Dead. The event, hosted by Hispanic Outreach Leadership Association, included face painting, live music, and dance performances from Dalton's Coalición de Lideres Latinos. Carlos Rodriguez, a UTC student from Mexico, was satisfied with the event. It's very good to share this, this part of our culture with, with international people. Mox News' Joseph Dykus also got a chance to participate in the festivities. You eat the donut off, off a string, which I tried to do and I ate about half of mine and then after I ate half of mine, the other half fell on the floor. However, Day of the Dead is not just fun and games. Ola Treasurer Miguel Mariscal explains that the Day of the Dead is a celebration of those who have passed away. On Day of the Dead it's time for family members to go to the graveyards, play their lost one's favorite music, have their favorite food, laugh, have a good time. So it's just mainly uh, bringing light on what usually is a grim situation. Day of the Dead takes place every October 31st through November 2nd and is a very important celebration in Mexico. Students here were happy about how accurate the event was. Troy Nelson, Mox News. Thanks, Troy. If you would like to get involved with HOLA, it means every Monday at 5 p.m. in the Heritage Room, or you can add HOLA as a friend on Facebook. Sometimes the pressures of school can be too much, but there is help available. Learn more from the woman's story next on Mox News Rewind. One of the lessons college students must learn is how to manage stress. For students who are already managing mental health conditions, knowing where to get help is vital. Chattanooga playwright and actress Jessie Knowles battled diagnosed mental conditions in college but completed her bachelor's and master's degree. My full truth. This might come as a surprise to you, but I'm not actually a scientist. We don't say insane asylum anymore. Okay, nut house. I have a hospital grade personality. Heading home from my junior year of college, I had been experiencing depression for a couple years before that. But that was the first time I experienced the delusional symptoms, and the hallucination type experience. I've had two diagnoses and I don't know if, that, if those go hand in hand or whether it's one doctor says one thing and another says another, but I've gotten bipolar 2 and schizoaffective. Bipolar 2 I think is more severe than bipolar 1, just the extremes of mood, and then schizoaffective is bipolar with schizophrenic tendencies, it's hallucinations and auditory and visual hallucinations. At UTC, counselors and staff of the Counseling Center are there to help when they're needed. The bones of it is um, they should absolutely come see us over at the Counseling Center. We do handle uh, crisis situations, so we do have opportunities for individuals when they do find that they're in crisis that we can do some initial triage work with that. Um, there could be some emergent situations where we need to get them to a higher level of care, but we definitely can do that initial treatment. Um, and then we also have a psychiatric nurse practitioner on campus so that that way we can handle handle any sort of medication management that we might need for individuals who are already established on medications or maybe need to look at some medications as they deal with the transition to college. I would say to any student who is already aware that they are struggling, if, if it's anxiety or depression or a more serious condition, that you check in with all the people who could come to your aid or be there as resources in case you experience troubles. Be prepared is good advice, no matter what your situation is. Maintaining your mental health is no exception. I think I'm due for a tune-up myself. We couldn't agree more, Bruce. If you're in need of emotional support, reach out to the UTC Counseling Center. 
For an appointment, call 423-425-4438 or come by the office at 312 University Center. If you need immediate help, call UTC Police at 423-425-4357. Call 911 if you're off campus. Reach out. Do you want to help this holiday season? We have a suggestion for you. It's just steps away from campus. In fact, just across the street from us. That story, next on Mox Rewind. If you were looking for a way to help the Chattanooga community during this holiday season, the Salvation Army is close to campus and looking for volunteers. The Salvation Army is always looking for volunteers to help them during their busy holiday season. They are located directly off of campus and are a perfect option for UTC students wanting to help spread the holiday cheer. The Salvation Army has been keeping their promise of doing the most good for people in need for 120 years in Chattanooga. They are passionate about making sure that everyone in Chattanooga receives joy during the holidays. Kimberly George has worked at the Salvation Army for almost a decade and says that volunteering at the Salvation Army always gets people in the mood for the holidays. The year, so no volunteer opportunity is the same. It's always fun. Um, they're usually uh, great folks to work with and it makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside too. And so we have volunteer opportunities in um, the fall and around the holidays with serving meals, ringing bells, adopting angels, working our angel tree tables um, at the mall, which is a lot of fun because you get to help shoppers and um, kind of people watch at the same time. Um, when you ring bells, it's a lot of fun because you're just wishing people Merry Christmas and thanking them. There are many different volunteer opportunities the Salvation Army has for the community, especially for the busy college students. The volunteer coordinator, Lauren Russick, is excited to get UTC's campus involved in all of their fun events. Uh, two really great ways to get involved as a student are with our angel tree tables and then also with our uh, ringing the bells for our kettle season. So with our angel tree program, um, angels represent seniors and children in need in our community. Um, that might not otherwise have gifts or other basic necessities during the holiday season. So each year we have over thousands of people we provide um, gifts and basic needs for and we need lots of help from the community to make that happen. So one of the ways we do that is with our angel tree tables. So we uh, have stations set up at both Northgate Mall and Hamilton Place uh, and we help encourage shoppers to, um, as they're doing their holiday uh, shopping themselves, to consider giving back to others as well. So we need people to help get the word out about Salvation Army, help shoppers choose angels, and then um, help keep that nice and organized. If you don't have time to go to any events that the Salvation Army is putting on, there are still many ways to help the Chattanooga community. There will be angel trees set up all over Chattanooga where you can donate toys, clothes, and other gifts. If you're interested in spreading the cheer, head to csarmy.org to find out more details. Here's what's next for Mox News Rewind. A new drug court could have a major impact on lives. You'll hear one woman's story next. Did the Trump rally at UTC have an impact on voters? Students speak out and see the celebration to mock the vote. There has been lots of recent talk about drug problems in our city and also our country. But there's a new program in place to prevent felonies. Natalie Strong has more. A new drug court program has been put into action in Hamilton County, and this week they received a grant totaling half a million dollars. Hamilton County Drug Court was established in 2010 and is intended for felons only. The new program is specifically for Sessions Court, or for those with misdemeanors. A recent graduate of the felony drug court program, Marsha Thrash, spoke out about how the current program has changed her life for the better. Drug court has totally changed my life, and rather being stuck in the vicious cycle of repeatedly in and out of jail for simply failing drug tests for probation. It's taught me the basics in living a normal life and how to be a productive member of society and a great mom. The proven success of the current drug court program, District Attorney Rachel Ortwine believes that the new program will reap the same benefits. This is a way to get them back on their feet, uh, get them jobs, get them education, even uh, it even provides a place for them to live. As of last week we uh, received notice that we were the only jurisdiction in Tennessee um, that received this grant to expand um, our recovery court. This new program that is already in effect will help those with severe drug addictions before they become felons. I'm Natalie Strong with Mox News. Thousands of people lined up outside McKenzie Arena to get in for the Trump rally for Marsha Blackburn. 
Protesters filled the flood assurance parking lot across the street. November 6th was the last day for voting in Tennessee, so Trump came to support and influence Chattanoogans to vote for Blackburn. Did the rally work and drumming support? Our Morgan Webb has the story. President Donald Trump was circling the country making stops in various states to help Blackburn and the GOP candidates win more electoral votes. Here's what senior student Blake Grosh had to say about it. Do you feel Trump coming to Chattanooga to endorse Marsha Blackburn increase voter turnout in her favor? I think Trump coming to Chattanooga to endorse Marsha Blackburn absolutely affected uh, her outcome in the race. I feel like it swayed voters to vote for her. I mean, Taylor Swift endorsed Phil Bredesen and she's just a low little low life. So uh, Trump coming, he's a significantly bigger figure, especially since he's the ruler of our USA. Um, I believe he absolutely helped her. Trump coming to UTC campus was a very unusual experience for everyone. Some students did not attend because they feared for their safety at the rally. Others supported both sides and thought it was a good opportunity for supporters and opposers to express their rights. S senior student Justin Trzowski expressed his opinion. How do you feel President Trump coming to Chattanooga affected UTC students? I think Trump coming to Chattanooga was a great opportunity for uh, all students, whether you support him or not. Those who do got to see the President of the United States and hear what he has to say. Those who didn't, you know, could protest and I'm sure a lot of uh, political debate and free speech was stimulated through his uh, coming to Chattanooga. For more information on election results, visit www.utc.moxnews.com. The turnout was so large across the nation for midterm elections that workers spent weeks recounting ballots cast in close elections. As a result, the Democrats gained control of the U.S. House, while Republicans got more seats in the U.S. Senate. Campus organizers made sure students came out to vote. Our Brandon Robinson has the report on Mock the Vote. Thanks, anchors. Hey, it's Brandon Robinson here at Chamberlain Field. We're at the Moxco Vote Party here on Election Day, where students have gathered around for prizes, t-shirts, and free food, and some fun games, and also to get more informed on how to vote and where to vote. Sponsored by SGA and Save the Children Action Network, the event was a hit with UTC's campus. Students were able to come together and enjoy the Election Day. There were also available shuttles taking students to the polls. Camden Eckler and Caroline Ravener, student organizer of the event, explained more about Moxco Vote. We organized together to celebrate voting. Yeah, um, it's just a nonpartisan, like, get out the vote party just to celebrate that's an election day in America and that um, students on campus voted. Along with students, UTC faculty took part in the event as well. Dr. Winter Sieg from the Political Science Department here at UTC helped run the event and shared her thoughts about voting. Why did students in college campuses like ours voted at a rate of over 50%? And so this mimics statewide trends. Tennessee turns out to vote at a lower rate than any other state in the nation, and Hamilton County is at the bottom of the counties in Tennessee for voter turnout. So we have a lot of work to do here, and this is a unique opportunity, and it's fantastic to see so many students out supporting this. See, this has been a success for on election day. Some free food, some free shirts, some fun, and some more information on where to vote. Thanks, ladies. Back to the news desk. Plans are taking shape for renovations to the old Lupton Library. Up next, see how it will evolve into Lupton Hall and what that will mean for our campus. Plus, why are wanted posters up for a lizard on our campus? The site of Lupton Library will soon be different from its familiar 1974 original look. The old library of UTC is currently under renovations with plans of creating more space for students. Lupton Library has been vacant since 2015 due to the new library opening, but plans for a repurposing project are in action. The building stands at three stories tall and will have more than 40,000 square feet of space for new classrooms and offices. Since the building is located in the middle of campus, it will hopefully serve as a central student connections building. Kind of really at the center of campus, right next to the UC and a place where anyone can kind of come to it. Student organizations and other student service centers like Student Government Association, the Women's Center, and the Multicultural Center will also be relocated into Lupton. Multiple college departments will move to Lupton as well. We need to tutor each other, which creates bonds and makes the college more like a community. The bottom floor will have an open floor plan with space designated for classrooms that can also be used as lecture halls, with the seating capacity ranging from 42 to more than 200. The second and third floor will house multiple departments along with the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences continue until 2020 and will open up under the new name of Lupton Hall. For more information, visit utc.edu slash construction. I'm Savannah Reed with Mox News. Have you seen the wanted posters up on our campus for a lizard? 
It's for a Mediterranean gecko now found increasingly in the southeast United States. A graduate student is conducting research about how common the lizard is now in this area. So, if you see the lizard, don't capture it. Just send an email about your sighting to Nissa Hunt at the email address on the screen. Up next, a team report on women in sports. See how these women are making a difference in Chattanooga and UTC. That's next. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a woman sports anchor? Angela Morian has an experience and a viewpoint that may surprise you. There has been a status quo, it seems, when it comes to the roles of men and women in the world of sports media. Angela Morian is a lead sports anchor for News Channel 12 in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Morian knows about these roles and is working to break the stereotypes against women sportscasters. Women get jobs based on their looks, then their knowledge of the sport. Men get their jobs based on their knowledge of the sport. Um, so there's that, and I think that is a downside for a lot of women in the industry when a woman gets hired and doesn't know what she's talking about. Morian does seem to be successful in trying to defeat these stereotypes and does seem to be making an impact even in her own newsroom. Just having that female that knows what she's talking about in the mix makes everyone okay and more accepting of a female newscaster. It's great working with Angie. Uh, she has a lot of personality. She really likes her sports, loves football, so it's been a good experience. Morian, though, does support diversifying the roles of men and women in sports broadcasting. You got two guys in the booth, a woman on the sideline. Rarely do you see a man on the sideline. Rarely do you see a woman in the booth. Um, so we'd like, let's diversify those roles a little bit. Morian is still working on trying to extend her career, but for right now, seems to be making her impact on the world of sports media. This is Connor Walker for Connor News. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live in a different country for college? Well, you're about to find out. Here's a story on sophomore tennis player Emma Van Heet. Thanks, you guys. Going to school in a different country would definitely be tough, but we're about to find out how Emma Van Heet conquers it on and off the court. For most students, college is difficult, but sophomore Emma Van Heet makes school look easy. Emma is from Belgium and is at UTC on a tennis scholarship. Emma looked at other schools and the recruiting process, but decided that UTC was the best fit for her. Not only does Emma Van Heet exceed on the tennis court, but she also exceeds in the classroom as well. Emma's first language is French, but no one will know that based on her 4.0 GPA. I really like it here, but I don't know if I even want to do a master back home or here. Um, it's also hard if I want to find a job here. Well, at home, I already know like a bunch of people and everything, so I don't know. I still have to think about it. I'm only a sophomore, so I have time. Emma is always on top of her schoolwork and works hard both on and off the court. Emma is a special player. She came in, like most freshmen, kind of struggled a little bit in the beginning, but her work ethic every day, she brings it every day, and she's just gotten better and better. And, uh, you know, as a coach, when you have someone out there competing for your program, someone you can depend on, it's good to know she's going to give me everything she has every match. There were many things that Emma had to adapt to when first coming to America for school. She quickly got the hang of everything and made an impact for the UTC women's tennis team. If you want to watch Emma play, come out this spring at UTC's new tennis courts for some action. UTC strength coach Rhonda Watts is very popular in the UTC athletics community. Thank you guys. Rhonda Watts is a great person and we are excited to learn more about her. UTC athletic strength trainer Rhonda Watts motivates UTC student athletes and coaches every day. Originally from Birmingham, Watts has been with the Mock since 2015 and works with volleyball, softball, and women's basketball. She enjoys working with the student athletes and watching them develop. She specializes in weightlifting along with cardio workouts. It's a great experience. Uh, it's an a awesome institution to work for, uh, being able to work with athletes. Girl. Everyone at UTC speaks highly of Watts. She worked with the women's tennis team last year and helped them to reach the SOCON semifinals. Chad Camber is thankful to what Watts brought to the team. Rhonda Watts was our strength coach my first two years here. Uh, Rhonda is an incredible person. I think it speaks vol volumes how she was able to come out and watch most of our home matches and cheer on the team. It, so she not only worked with the players in, in the weight room, but also knowing what they were like on the court. 
I think she really could get to a player's heart. I think she could really know what made him tick and kind of say the right things. And as a tennis coach, it's good to get an opinion of someone that may not know the tennis as well, but knows of what it's like to be an athlete. Watts loves what she does, and that is part of what makes her successful. A knife, a pumpkin, and a little inspiration. Put them all together, and what did you have? Wear some art for a worthy cause. That story is next on Mox News Rewind. Do you have the guts to get created with a pumpkin? Our Carlton Smith did. See what he crafted to benefit the worthy cause. Halloween may be over, but one organization looks to scare up some wishes. The American Institute of Graphic Arts, or AIGA, is the oldest and largest platform for designers and creatives. AIGA partnered with Make-A-Wish East Tennessee for Chattanooga's first Guts Pumpkin Carving Contest. But what is Guts? Guts actually started with AIGA Charlotte. Um, it, was part, it was paired with a local agency crafted that kind of put on the first Guts uh, benefit that always does like a Make-A-Wish chapter. So basically a local AIGA chapter partners with their local Make-A-Wish chapter and we basically go and we invite creatives to come and carve pumpkins for us live. Um, people are able to look at the carvings, they're able to bid on the carvings um, in order to raise money for Make-A-Wish and for us it's Make-A-Wish East Tennessee. The competition was broken into two categories, individual and team carving contests. The winner of the team carving contest was Lodge Cast Iron Skillet who made a series of Nightmare Before Christmas pumpkins. The individual winner was yours truly with a Bob's Burgers themed pumpkin. Winners receive bragging rights and the great feeling of helping a great charity. I love our, the fact that Chattanooga has such a big heart and they're so able to like help us raise money um, for the kiddos, the brave kiddos that make a wish and hopefully it'll help kind of grant a wish. AIGA is aiming to do the Guts Pumpkin Carving Contest again next year. So if you want to have some fun and raise some money for a great cause, start practicing now. For Mox News, I'm Carlton Smith. That does it for this edition of Mox News Rewind. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to check out our website, moxnews.com, to, to continue following the news throughout the week. And while you're there, make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a great weekend from all of us here at Mox News.